Hey folks, welcome back to Todd Bosley's world famous YouTube channel. Today we have a very unique collection of Garbage Pail Kids. The reason that these are unique is because every one of them is PSA 10. This is from a recent collection that I purchased um, probably within the last month or so. Uh, this is a 1986. Most of these are 86 through 88. Just kind of show you what they look like. Now, Garbage Pail Kids for a long time were not really considered that collectible. But within the last five years or so, they've really grown in popularity. So I'm going to go through each one and kind of show it to you. This is Joe Blow. He's a, he's a pretty uh, popular one. This one has the principal back. And I think there's only like a population of around six or so of this particular card. Most of these cards in PSA 10 are very hard to find. Um, I would say you're probably looking at less than... Probably 50 at, at the highest in most of them. Some may have more, but uh, there are quite a few that are down around 10, population of 10 or less. Um, this is a collection of about 36 different cards, all PSA 10 from one large collection. I'm Todd Bosley. I own Ohio Trading Coin and Jewelry, and we buy and sell all kinds of different things, uh, sports cards, collectibles, coins, you name it. Anything that's collectible, I love it. And I sure love these. Uh, I'm going to kind of show you the front and the back. If you guys are familiar with PSA, which probably most of you are, this number right here, if you go to PSA verification, you can go online. You don't have to be a member and you can just look that number up and it'll give you the population of the cards that have been graded. This one's kind of funny. It's called Bruised Lee, uh, making reference to Bruce Lee. This is called Marvin Gardens. Again, these are all PSA 10. Also take a look at the number here, 92. So this is the 92nd card that they made. And I'll try to show you a good reference. You'll see that they say A and B because they would use the image twice, but give it a different name. And in some cases, they actually kind of got in trouble with it a little bit. These were, these were pretty racy and um, maybe not the politest in some situations. Uh, I didn't understand this one. I had to have somebody explain it to me, DDT. Apparently, that was a chemical that was used. So uh, these were, you know, far beyond just uh, what a kid would understand, as most things are anymore. But this is the front and the back. I just thought it's a really neat collection. I wanted to share it with all of our viewers. Uh, here's Horsey Henry. A PSA 10. This is number 86A. Now, this is a back with the checklist, and I have noticed on some of these, they have different backs. So you may have a horsey Henry, but it could have a different back. And the back were puzzles that you would put together. And they they made millions and millions of these cards. Um, in our area, oh, well, here is Kit Spit. Uh, anyhow, that's a pretty interesting one. In our area, we have a clo a large closeout chain closeout store, and I know when I was a kid, so this would have been in the mid '80s, uh, you could buy boxes of these cards for ten cents. Here's Becky, Beaky Becky, uh, and this is number ninety nine A. So there would also be a ninety nine B, but this is the ninety ninth card that they ever made of this particular garbage pail series. So a lot of these would be probably Series 1 or Series 2. Kitty Litter. This is 159B, so this would probably be more in like the Series 4 or 5. I'm just guessing. If you guys know, you can let me know. Um, I really like these a lot. No, that, that got in there by accident, I guess. But that's still a very nice Mickey Mantle. Wow. Uh, Mickey Mantle, 1961, PSA 8. Gotta like that. Okay, here we go. H Harry Harriet. It's number 150A. And that's the back of it. Sometimes it's fun to just stop your computer or your TV and read some of the stuff that's on the back here. Here's Teddy Bear, 164A. There's also, um, I'll show you right here, 
There are some that have the copyright and there's some that do not. So some will say they have the copyright and some will say they don't. Okay, here's what your completed green border puzzle will look like. That's kind of scary. So you would put all of these together and they would make a puzzle on the back. Apparently after you use the sticker, then you would be able to use the back. Here's over Eaton. I guess he did. That's number 518B. So this would be this would be a much higher series, but still it's PSA 10. Then the back looks like this. Here's Ruby Cube, Playoff Rubik's Cube. PSA 10, number 163B. Now this, so there would be a 163A that would be different. <clears throat> this is a much higher number, 302B. This was made in 87. This is Artificial Mitchell. Then just a puzzle piece on the back. Duplicate. 330B. There's the back of that. These are very interesting. And I think as far as a long-term investment, these, these probably are a really great deal. You can get a lot of these PSA 10s. They range between 100 to 400 sometimes more. Um, some of them go into the thousands, depending on which one you're looking for. But you can still get a lot of these cards that are under, you know, 300. Here's Elastic Elwood, uh, and that does have the copyright with it. 272A. You can still get a lot of these cards, though, afford they're affordable. And PSA 10s are just, you know, these were made in 86. It's still a very hard... Hard piece to find. Um, eBay is a good place to find this kind of stuff. Sometimes they have them on Amazon. You just got to watch the pricing. And I think the issue with a lot of these, though, was that the sticker would peel up. And the centering is always a problem on Garbage Pail. So when you grade a PSA 10, you're going to be looking at this border all around here. You're going to be looking at the edges, that they're sharp, that the color's right. So in my estimation, that for as many as is were made um there are few psa 10s that's what makes these pretty incredible just can't crack the jack i like this one that's number 58a now that's a, that's a good one that's from 1985 has a puzzle piece on the back this is uh this is some harder stuff to find when you start getting under 100 and I know there's a couple of this one. This is Humongous. He's 124A. So the 124B would be the same picture, but it would have a different name. And here is J Spray. Okay. Again, PSA 10. Let's try to run through these as fast as I can. But long term, I think that everybody should own a few of these for sure. Um, it's a it's a great investment in my opinion and one that I think is going to go much higher than where it's at now Especially if you have like a 10 to 20 year outlook on things I'll Show you the back of this uh, We're Ohio trading coin and jewelry. We're located in Louisville, Ohio And we buy collections. I will basically buy any Collection that is worth money and the more money it's worth the more I like it when you invest in things like this, where the, it's the best of the best, that's sure to go up. I also like wax boxes, though. I have to tell you, I own a lot of garbage pail wax boxes because I think that those long term, especially with all of the all the different people on YouTube that are opening all the boxes and stuff, I think there's going to be a shortage of these boxes. So I see that being also a great investment, but at the same time, you may have to open 50 boxes to get one PSA 10. I don't really know the rate, the ratio for sure, but I know for the millions that they made, if you look at PSA, there are very few PSA 10s. I was actually very shocked by it. I always make this comparison in my videos, but I went to buy a uh, Tiger Woods rookie card and they were only, they were like 300 bucks. And I thought, well, that's not very much money. 
But then when I looked at the PSA, when I put this number in PSA verification, I realized that there were like 11 or 12,000 PSA 10 Tiger Wood cards. And I thought, well, that's not a good investment, at least to me. I just think that's too many. Tiger Woods is a great golfer. So it's not to take anything away from him. But they just really overdid the amount of cards that they made. When you have 11,000 PSA 10s, that's crazy. Okay, so we were talking about Humongous earlier. Here's 124B. This is King Size Kevin. So you can see what they did with these cards. They made two different versions. Well, they made this two versions with different names. But it's the same artwork. And that one has a different back. Okay, here's Earl Painting. Kind of like that guy. He's number 178A. And then you can see the back. There's lots of different stuff on the back. Again, for the time, it was this was one of those cards. And this is the last card here, Double Heather. Now, they made a different... They had a different name for this particular card uh, that was very controversial. And I, I don't have that one in this collection. I've had it before. Uh, 1985 Garbage Pail 49A. And um, this, this was uh, very controversial. Anyhow, I'm Ohio Trading Coin & Jewelry. If you have anything that you want to sell, I'm buying. And if you're looking to buy... Anything that we have on our videos is for sale. I would encourage you to take a look at all of the different items that we have. Well, that wasn't good. Um, luckily, they're protected well. But take a look at all the different items that we have. We have a lot of neat stuff for sale. And if you're in the Louisville, Ohio area, please stop by or make an appointment. We do a lot of um, expensive coins, a lot of paper money, a lot of baseball, football, basketball cards, and we do garbage pail. So if you're interested in selling, let me help you find the right buyer. Don't just send it to an auction. Don't pay the 30 to 50% that they get you for. Check with us first and let's see what we can do for you. Thanks for watching. My phone number is 330-323-9775. That's my cell phone. 330-323-9775. Feel free to call or text. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.